Welcome again. Right now we're at 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 1 through 14. Paul claims rights. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Haven't I seen Jesus Christ, our Lord? Now, Paul is not necessarily talking about seeing him in, in person, in the flesh, so to speak. He saw him in a vision as Jesus himself appeared to him on the road to Damascus and knocked him off his horse. We already read about it in Acts chapter 9. Aren't you my work in the Lord? If to others I am not an apostle, yet at least I am to you. Paul acknowledges here that he is an apostle only to some people, not to all people. And don't forget that the word apostle is just a fancy transliteration of another word that means just a sent one, someone who's sent. If Peter sends John to the store to get something for him, then John is Peter's apostle. It just means one sent, someone who is sent. If to others I am not an apostle, yet at least I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. My defense to those who examine me is this. Have we no right to eat and to drink? Have we no right to take along a wife who is a believer, even as the rest of the apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Very interesting that a lot of the apostles took along their wives. Or have only Barnabas and I no right to work? What soldier ever serves at his own expense? Who plants a vineyard and doesn't eat of its fruit? Or who feeds a flock and doesn't drink from the flock's milk? Do I speak these things according to the ways of men? Or doesn't the law also say the same thing? Notice here, Paul cites the authority of the law. If the law is done away with, then why does Paul always cite the authority of the law to back up his doctrine? Or doesn't the law also say the same thing? For it is written in the law of Moses, You shall not muzzle an ox while it treads out the grain. That's found in Deuteronomy chapter 25 verse 4. Is it for the oxen that God cares? Or does he say it assuredly for our sake? Yes, it was written for our sake, because he who plows ought to plow in hope, and he who threshes in hope should partake of his hope. If we sowed to you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we reap your fleshly things? If others partake of this right over you, don't we yet more? Nevertheless, we didn't use this right, but we bear all things that we may cause no hindrance to the good news of Christ. Don't you know that those who serve around the sacred things eat from the things of the temple, and those who wait on the altar have their portion with the altar? Even so, the Lord ordained that those who proclaim the good news, or the gospel, should live from the good news. What Paul is saying here is just this. He says, basically, we're here feeding you spiritually. We're here working with you. We're here sowing things into your lives. Isn't it too much to ask that you give us some of the things that we need? Like we're pouring our lives out for you. Is it too much to ask you to help us? In the next session, Paul talks about his obligations. Don't miss it. Until then, seek God with all your heart all your heart. And if you do, you will find him. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. Love you guys.